we can bow our heads, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the word you've given me to share this morning. Lord, I ask that you anoint me to deliver the word, and you anoint the people's ears to hear the word and understand it. Thank you for your rhema this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I want you to look... I'm going to be reading from the Amplified. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians. In chapter 5. In 1 Corinthians. Chapter 5. I want you to look at. At verse 11, this is Paul writing, but now I write to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of a Christian brother if he is known to be guilty of immorality or greed, or as an idolater whose soul is devoted to any object that usurps the place of God, or if a person with a foul tongue railing, abusing, reviling, slandering, or as a drunkard or a swindler or a robber. No, you must not so much as eat with such a person. Now, look at 2 Thessalonians. In chapter 3. In chapter 3, and in verse 14, But if anyone in the church refuses to obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and do not associate with him so that he may be ashamed. Now, why is he saying this? Well, for one reason... In the old days, if you understood covenant, if you were in covenant with somebody, you shared a meal with them, you broke bread with them. But if you wasn't, you didn't. So if you were seen eating with somebody, then they assume, people assume you were in covenant together. And you wouldn't be in covenant with somebody living a very vile life. But now another reason is this. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. And this is a very important word this morning. Because it's talking about each and every one of us. In Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 1, Therefore be... Amplified, be imitators of God, copy him and follow his example as well beloved children imitate their father. Now I think King James says, be you followers. But the word follow don't mean to follow in a geographical path or destination. It means to follow in lifestyle. In other words, be like they are. In other words, as it says in the Amplified, to imitate. Be ye imitators of God. You see, we were created to be imitators. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. In chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, verse 1. Pattern yourselves after me. Follow my example as I imitate and follow Christ. I want you to notice the word imitate. It's very important. It doesn't seem like it's just a trivial little word. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse... 
15. After all, though you should have 10,000 teachers and guides to direct you in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For I become your father in Christ Jesus through the glad tidings of the gospel. So I urge and implore you, be ye imitators of me. For this very cause I sent to you Timothy, who is my beloved, trustworthy child in the Lord, who will recall to your minds my method of proceeding in course of conduct. You know this is not course of geographical road. It's course of conduct and way of life in Christ, such as I teach everywhere in each of the churches. Now, follow, the word follow you see in the Bible so much, it don't mean follow down a path or follow to a destination. It means follow in the sense of follow my example or to imitate. Now, there's a problem in that sense Because God made us with the ability to imitate. Had to, or we couldn't have imitated Christ. To imitate. But the problem is, we have a tendency to imitate. We were created to imitate. But you have to be careful who you are around. That's why it's warning us of that. Because you will begin to imitate whoever you are around. And you don't want to imitate those kind of people. Because you're going to imitate. It just happens consciously or unconsciously. Purposefully or non-purposely. We are imitators. That's who and what we are. So he's saying, don't hang around somebody you don't want to be like. Because you might not pick up on, that means imitate, everything they do. But you'll wind up picking up on something they do. And it might be something that's not in the will of God. So you're not supposed to choose to not be with these people because they're evil and you're going to be a goody two-shoes. No, it's because you're smart. Because you have a weakness, if you use it wrong, to imitate. And it's very, you know, we, we imitate people sometimes when we mean to or just when we don't mean to. Every one of us is the sum total <coughs> Of the things consciously or unconsciously, we imitate somebody in. Well, I picked that up from him. That's imitation. And you're going to do it. So he said, be careful who you are around. Don't be around what you don't want to be. Find somebody you want to be like. Be around them. Because that's the kind of acts you want to imitate. But we all imitate. I know, and I I don't know if that's one of the reasons he chose me, but I developed my ability to imitate. I made a living with it without realizing what it was actually for. It was so we could imitate Christ and those around us who are living the right life. Amen. But I loved Elvis Presley. And I would stand in front of the mirror and comb my hair for hours on to end to look like Elvis Presley. I wanted to imitate Elvis I thought I was doing a good job. Of course, I know people here me probably didn't think so. No. But I learned to say, well, baby, 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 baby. <laughs> yeah. But I imitated Elvis. 
And, of course, people around who never got to see Elvis, I was the closest thing they could get. But it's really weird how the Lord blessed me. I finally, I got to meet Elvis because I imitated him. One of the reasons. But I imitated a lot of people. And I know, and so you do too. I don't know if you realize that. So since we're susceptible to imitating what we're around, consciously or unconsciously, we need to choose to be around the people we want to be like. Because if you're around somebody and you say, well, I mean, I don't, I, I don't do the things they do. I'm not like that, but I like to hang out with them. Well, you'll pick up on some of the things they do, whether you even realize it or not. So don't do that. I mean, I think back, I imitated my grandfather as best I could because I admired him. But even if you hate somebody, the reason you have to forgive them, because if you hate somebody and you hold that hate right here, you're going to begin to imitate what you're holding before you. And you begin to be like that. That's why you see young people, I say young men or women, who have a parent who drinks too much, and they hate it. They hate it. But because they hate it, they keep it right here, and they wind up drinking too much. Usually an alcoholic son is like an alcoholic. He becomes an alcoholic. Imitation. It's so simple, it seems, and it's so dangerous. But we're all the sum total of the things we begin to imitate because we were created to be imitators. And that's why you need to choose your friendships and your fellowships closely. Don't hang out with somebody you don't want to be like. Because Paul says here, verse 17, For this very cause I sent you Timothy, who is my beloved and trustworthy child in the Lord, who will recall to your minds and my methods of proceeding in course of conduct and way of life in Christ, such as I teach everywhere in the churches. He's sending Timothy to give them someone to imitate. Imitate this guy, he imitates me. In fact, it says several times, I don't know if I have notes on it, that uh, it says, well, let's look at Ephesians 5 1 again. And he uses the word follow. Follow means to imitate. Follow the example. In other words, imitate me. And in King James, I said, he says, be your follower of me as I'm a follower of Christ. Who's a follower of God? The process of imitation. As I say, it don't mean follow me down some geographical path. Follow my example. But this makes us very vulnerable. And whether I realize it or not, purposely or not, I will begin to imitate the people around me. How they speak, how they walk, how they talk, how they think, how they dress. I did all of that, and I know if you think back, you have too. You dress like your favorite aunt. Are your favorite uncle? Do you act like certain people, say things certain ways because you heard someone else say them? So he gave us the ability to imitate so we could imitate Christ, but it's very dangerous to be an imitator because now you're responsible for what you imitate. Are you following me? 
So you must choose wisely, not because you don't want to hang out bad people because you're a goody-goody, but you want to hang out with who you want to be like because you're going to be like who you hang out with, whether you like it or believe it or not. And I know, I can think back over all the people that I've imitated. Didn't realize I was doing it, but I did. I remember I had uh, a cousin named Fred Baggett. Fred went to the Navy and did a hitch in the Navy, come home. And what Fred picked up from the Navy, he loved to polish his shoes, and his shoes looked like glass all the time. And I never thought about polishing my shoes. Boy, I started polishing my shoes. I could never really get them to look like Fred's. They did what you call spit shine. And I even went and bought a, because popular back then, a pair of engineer's boots. That's the black boots with the little buckle thing on the side, you know, the square toe. Well, they came with oil in them, in the leather. Imagine how hard it was to polish that. You have to polish it, spit shine it, polish it, spit shine it, polish it, spit shine it, till it begins to come up glossy. Oh, man, I polished and spit shine those boots <laughs> for hours and hours and hours. And it finally worked. I had shiny engineer's boots. And then I had a cousin, I don't know if you even remember, when they used to have little thin belts. And they made thin belts with two buckles, one here and one here. And oh my Lord, I wanted one of them so bad. So I went and got me a thin belt with two buckles. Of course, then there was the black Ivy League pants with the buckle in the back. Peg 14. Yes. Had sung about it. Yeah, really are keen. 14, da da da. When you put them on, I'm a rare to go. When I go places, I just don't care. And you know why, if you see what I wear, four, peg 14. You pegged them 14 inches, but then they were so small you couldn't get your feet on them. <laughs> so you had to put a zipper in the leg to put them on and zip it up. And of course, they couldn't go down over your shoes, so. They were up above your shoes. What would they, we, they looked like flood pants. <laughs> oh, man, I had become, I just did what I liked. I was an imitator. I didn't give nobody thought. You know where I got my platinum hair? James Brown. James Brown. James Brown was one of my idols. And there was a period of time where James had a bouffant. Puffed up hair, do you know? And I wanted a bouffant like James. Only his was black, so I figured mine would be white. So I bleached it, and it turned red. <laughs> and I bleached it again, and it turned strawberry. I kept bleaching it till it turned white, but then it fell out. <laughs> so I had to start all over. But I finally had platinum white hair. Problem with that is, your hair grows, and you will constantly have black roots. Yeah, I know. So I had to bleach the roots about every ten days. But I had platinum blonde hair, and I got a beautician to do it in a bouffant. So I was the opposite James Brown. But I was imitating him, and I danced like James Brown. Spent hours. And I got good at some things I imitate. Got so good at imitating James Brown, 
<coughs> that if James would see me in the audience, he'd invite, invite me up, and we'd dance together. He'd do a few bars, and I'd do a few bars, and he'd do a few bars. So I got to dance on stage with James Brown because I imitated him. I wound up making it to Vegas and beating Elvis Presley. Well, I imitated him. I used to try to imitate Johnny Cash, but you can't hardly imitate that voice. Hello, my name is Johnny Cash. No, I couldn't do that. I could sing a song. Couldn't even begin to imitate him. But I got to where, in fact, we are all a combination of people we've admired or disliked and therefore imitated. We're not original. You know what's original? That combination makes you who you are, and you become different than anybody else. But we all have a different combination. So know this. You're going to start imitating the people you're around. So if you want to be a winner, why would you hang out with a loser? If you do, you're going to lose. Well, no, I'm not going to be like that. Yes, you will, whether you believe it or not. Why? Because you were created to imitate. We like to think we're original. The only original thing is the choice of people we chose to imitate. And that makes a different combination, like I say. But he warns us all the time. Now, religious people think that he warns you not to hang out with these murderers and rapists and fornicators because they're bad people. No, that's not the reason. He don't want you to hang out with them because he don't want you to be like them. And you'll pick up on some things that they're doing. In fact, he said, it always made, always made me wonder if maybe 1 Corinthians should have been 2 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians should have been 1 Corinthians because in 2 Corinthians, he says, uh, to come out from among them that are evil. Don't be with them. But then in 1 Corinthians, he said, I told you before to come out from among them, yet not all together. Because if you do, how are you going to influence them? Seems like that should have been 2 Corinthians, so it doesn't matter. But he said that. And if you read in the Bible, the word follow is in the Bible so many times. And it means to follow in their lifestyle. Do what I do. Imitate me. Thank God we were created with the ability to imitate what was bad is we was given the freedom of what to imitate. But even if you don't intend to be imitating a certain person, you may dislike everything they do. Don't hang out with them, because if you do, you're going to sooner or later start doing some things they do the way they do them. And I'm telling you, if you think back over your life, you're going to remember, like I said, that you like to dress like a certain aunt at one time. Or you like to go fishing like an uncle. Or you drove like so. I remember my daddy always drove because he didn't have air conditioned cars. He didn't back then. He would roll the window down and drove with his arm out the window with one hand like this. Even when we had air conditioning, I would roll the window down so I could drive with my arm sitting there like that. That's the way Daddy drove. And that become comfortable to me. It become very uncomfortable for me to roll the window up even though we had air conditioning. Yeah. And then, of course, I don't know if you remember, when they had them little, little windows up front that you could put out this way. Yeah. My Daddy always drove with those windows out. Had to do that. I was so disappointed when they quit making windows that way. But they didn't need to because we had air conditioning. 
But I wanted a window turned out to look like daddy. And as I look back over my life, there are so many people that I'm conscious of that I imitated. Sought to imitate. Wanted to be like them. Elvis Presley, I used to stand with my hand like this. Because that's the way he stood with his hand. He's always like that. James Brown walked pigeon toed. I had to learn to walk pigeon toed. So I could look like James Brown. Otis Redding, who I was very good friends with back home before either one of us made it, he used to stand and sing and stomp his left foot. So I learned to stand and sing and stomp my left foot. I quit I quit dancing like James Brown, started stomping my foot like Otis Redding. You look good too. Huh? She looked good too doing that. I look good doing that? <laughs> See, she liked it. Yeah. But that was an imitation. And it's incredible that I imitated so many people in life that I know about. I don't know how many people I imitated I don't know about. They don't, didn't purposely mean to. But that combination of people became who I am. And I'm glad I did because here we are. I learned to be an entertainer imitating people. And then became a complete separate entity within itself. And that's what, where I learned to communicate with people. And now here, I use it to communicate God's word so that we can all improve our lives and become more like him. But know that you're an imitator so don't be around nobody you want to be, don't want to be like. Because you will unconsciously pick up on something they do and the way they do it. The way they talk. I want you to think back this week coming. And how many people you imitate? Why do you do certain things you do? See if you can remember why you do this this way <coughs> or this this way. Nothing wrong with it. I just want you to realize how pervasive that is and how dangerous it is to be around somebody you don't want to be like. He made us that way. If you look, if I can find it, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I think this is what I'm looking for. I read this to you before. Now realizing after I've said what I did, what he's saying here. Verse 15. After all, though you should have 10,000 teachers, God's to direct you in Christ, yet you don't have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the glad tidings. So I urge and implore you, be ye imitators of me. He urges and implore, imitate me. For this very cause I said to you, Timothy. What cause? To be imitators of him. That's why I said to you, Timothy, who's my beloved and trustworthy child in the Lord. In other words, he began to imitate Paul to such an extent he was like his own son. Who will recall to your minds my methods of proceeding and course of conduct and way of life in Christ. Such as I teach. So when he says, follow me, he means this. Such as I teach everywhere in each of the churches. Some of you become 
conceited, arrogant, and pretentious, counting on my not coming to you, but I'll come. And shortly, if the Lord's willing. And then I'll perceive and understand not what the talk of these puffed up and arrogant spirits amount to, but their force, their, the moral power and excellence of their soul. For the kingdom of God consists of and is based on not talk, but power. Now, I don't know how we can get much clearer. So know this, you are an imitator. And if you couldn't imitate, you wouldn't be who you are. But since you were created to be an imitator, that becomes a weakness or a danger. Because even if you don't realize it, you're going to pick up and imitate something in the person's life you hang around. Be careful. Be careful. I know I, uh, I learned to shave like my father. My father hated to shave. The mom would get on to him. And then he would shave with a safety razor. And even when I got an electric razor, and still do, I'll shave first with the electric razor. If it ain't close enough, then I'll take a straight razor and shave again, or a safety razor, like my daddy. Oh, and my daddy, when his daddy drink coffee, and Jackie Gleason did this too, he would hold the cup with his little finger up. I had to practice to learn how to do that. To hold the cup with your little finger up. Jackie Gleason did that. Wore a pinky ring. So I'd put on my little pinky ring and watch the little finger stick up. Because I admired that. But whether I admired it or not, if I kept watching it, I would have started doing it without I didn't even realizing I was doing it. Why? Because I was created to be an imitator. You know, on the song, My Way, written by Paul Anka. I know Paul. I did it my way. No, he did it the way that it came out after him learned to imitate many people that created Paul Anka. Because how could Frank Sinatra sing My Way and Paul Anka sing My Way and both of them mean the same thing? Couldn't. To know this, and although it won't take long for me to get this over, you are created and have a weakness towards imitating what's around you. So be very, very careful what you allow yourself in the presence of. Not because you're better than that, but because you don't want to be like that. We have to make definite choices. You can't just go out here. And I see people say, well, you know, I'm not a Christian. I hang out with people who are not Christian. And we still may go to a nightclub every now and then, but I don't let it affect me. Oh, it's affecting you, whether you realize it or not. Now, you're being, you're being impressed upon Unconsciously, you don't even know it. But you'll pick up on it. And remember that word, pick up, is day. Well, I picked that up from my uncle. Well, I picked that up from Bill. Watch out what you pick up. Because it's a lot easier to pick it up than it is to lay it down. It's hard to break a habit that you've learned through imitating something. Once it becomes a habit, very hard to undo. So be careful up front. Choose carefully. And don't hang out with them people. That's why he tells us we should fellowship with one another. Why? Because we both have the same goal. So we both pick up on doing the same things. Fellowship. It says it strengthens us to fellowship together. And it does. And I've had so many people who are Christian come to church, love to come to church, but keep hanging out with their old friends. 
And Jesus said something it's very crucial if you pick up on it. Now, he was a prince of peace. But he says, I did not come to bring peace. I come to, to bring division. To turn the two of the family against the three, the father against the son, the mother against the daughter. Why? Because you're going to have to choose to follow him or them. You can't do both. So to choose him, if you really choose him, is going to force you to begin to choose the set of friends who are trying to walk like him and because it will help you walk that way. You're looking for like people. Amen? So Jesus said you may even have to divide your family up. If they're not following me, then you got to follow me. And it may lead to you doing everything different than they do. So then he's brought division, not peace. But that brings peace in your life. See, we have peace with God. God's at peace with us. <clears throat> I know King James translates that a little different. When the angel saying, Peace on earth, goodwill among men. No, he wasn't there. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. God has goodwill toward us. No evil intent now. In fact, as I said, part of the prayer, putting on your, your armor of God, when it says, shod your feet in the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I couldn't figure out what that means.